So I have before me two laptops advertised to be built for creative professionals. I have the MacBook Pro 16, with the latest M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. I also have the MSI Creator Z16. And here are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now, at the recording of this video, these two laptops are neck and neck in price. So really the question is, should you go with the latest Apple SoC M1 chips, or should you go with the classic Intel and Nvidia RTX graphics? That's what we're gonna get into with this video. Now we're gonna talk about the performance benchmarks here in just a second, but I first wanna talk about the build quality, the screens, the keyboards, the color gamut ranges, all the extra surrounding details before we even get to the performance. So let's get right into it. First and foremost, let's get into the build quality. We have an aluminum chassis on both laptops. As you can see, the MSI Creator Z16 is slightly thinner. Also, you can see as we stack them on top of each other, the MacBook Pro is a little bit smaller in form factor. Just by a little bit here, you see the Z16 sticking out from underneath the MacBook Pro. Now, jumping into some more of the assembly elements, I love how the MacBook Pros are put together. I love the engraving on the bottom of the MacBook Pro. Of course, all of the edges are neatly fit bottom cover into side panel. You can quickly access the internals by pulling off these screws, but by pulling off these screws, you're not gonna have any upgrade ability. Everything is soldered to the motherboard. So this laptop, once you purchase it, that's what you get. You don't get to upgrade it post purchase. Now, taking a look at the Z16, um, I like the bottom cover. It's much different. It's much more I don't want to say designed, but there's more elements that go into it. So you have this ring that goes around the chassis here, which is actually a plastic ring. And then you have the aluminum that is nestled into the bottom cover. What I like about this design is they were able to make a clean transition from the bottom cover to the side panels as well. They just did it in a slightly different way. It's not the traditional one piece of aluminum fits into one piece of the side panels. It's, it's different. I'm not saying it's the best idea. Idea. I'm not saying I love that they used plastic. It's a different design. Honestly, if I were going to pick between the two, I like the classic traditional one piece of aluminum fits into the side panels and we're done. But it's definitely an idea that MSI was trying out. One thing to point out is how the USB type A port fits into the side panel. Because it's such a tall port, they were able to keep the laptop thin by basically removing um, the side panel and how it comes across in one clean designed line. They had to cut that out. While we're on the ports, we might as well talk about them. On the MSI Creator Z16, we have the headphone jack, USB type C, which is Thunderbolt, USB type A, and then we have our large vent and our power adapter here. On the other side, we have a micro SD card slot, another USB type C, and a USB type A, as well as our vent. And then we have two vents along the back side of the chassis. Moving on to the MacBook Pro 16, we have our dedicated HDMI port, USB type C, which is Thunderbolt as well, a full SD card slot. And on the other side, we have our MagSafe charger, two USB type C's, and a headphone jack. And of course we have vents along both of the left and right side panel. And then we have a long vent along the back side of the chassis. So similar ventilation, but quite different in ports. I would say that the laptop that really stands out in regards to ports for me would be the MacBook Pro. Having that dedicated HDMI makes your on-the-go life much simpler. You end up in a meeting and there's no dongle available, but there's always an HDMI cord to plug into a monitor or a projector or whatever it might be. And this really just allows you to not have to be stuck without your HDMI hookup to give your presentation. There has been countless times when I've been in a meeting, somebody has a MacBook Pro and then yells out, who has a dongle? You know, because they don't have the HDMI. Well, they've brought that back. Over with the MSI, they've gone with eliminating the HDMI port. And I think that's really gonna end up hurting them uh, with the ease of on-the-go friendliness. Now let's do a quick open and close test to check the ease of opening these laptops with one hand, as well as the screen flex. So as you can see, we open and close easily with one hand. The MacBook Pro hinge is a little bit stickier. Um, and then let's go ahead and check out the screen flex. Here's the MacBook Pro. It's it's crazy how stiff this screen is. I, I literally cannot even flex it. Um, and then down at the bottom, because of that singular hinge, it does not flex. Coming over here to the MSI Z16. 
We definitely have some screen flex on this one. It's not as bad as some laptops I've seen, but there's definitely some screen flex. And then because of the two hinge configuration, you have some screen flex down at the bottom, but it's not a ton. Now, shifting things over to the keyboards and the trackpads, this is one area that the MacBook Pro absolutely dominates. I'm gonna slide these around here and check out the difference between the trackpads on the Z16 versus the MacBook Pro. It's not even a competition. The MacBook Pro trackpad is massive. Uh, it has so many touch gestures and touch sensitivities built right in. Um, there are Windows drivers that allow you to have, you know, some different touch gestures, but nothing compares to the MacBook Pro trackpad. They have spent years refining the gestures, the sensitivity, and this one actually is a vibration click, so it does not even click down, it's vibration going through the trackpad that really tells your brain that you're clicking it or you know tells your finger sensitivity. Where well, this is a manual click, this is a manual trackpad. So this one is gonna be substantially quieter and uh, I'll do a quick test for you of the trackpad and the keyboard so you can hear both of them in action uh, so you can tell which one uh, you like better as far as the sound. Shifting over to the keyboard, now that you've heard the keyboard and trackpad, we have a Steel Series keyboard on the Z16, a nice quiet click, a really uh, satisfying snap. Uh, it's not loud, but it has that satisfying snap, as you heard in the audio sample. But as we shift over to the MacBook Pro, it's slightly quieter and it doesn't have that clicky snap sound. Some people really enjoy that. I think if you are somebody who likes that more classic gamer laptop, you would lean towards the MSI with the Steel Series keyboard. Over on the MacBook Pro, we have the classic and now newly refined scissor switch keyboard in this matte black finish in the keyboard bed. And then over on the MSI side, we have a slightly wider keyboard with this stack of keys here, um, but they both work very well. I like them both. They both type very clean. Regarding the webcam, the MacBook Pro has a 1080p webcam and the MSI Z16 has the classic 720p. And here's a quick sample of each of those so you can check them out. Here is a test of the webcam. It's a 1080p webcam. Check it out the audio as well to see if you like the webcam, see if it fits for your needs. It's definitely better than the crappy 720p webcams we've had forever. So I'm super stoked that Apple made this move for the 1080p. Here is the webcam for the Z16. You can see the color and the audio right now. It's definitely a little grainy. I've got good lighting on me, uh, but it'll do the trick as well. And regarding the speakers and audio experience of each laptop, here's a quick sample of that. Now, battery life, similar to the trackpad, is not even a competition. The MacBook Pro is so insanely optimized, it completely crushes the MSI Z16. And here are the results on the battery life. Also, to charge the MacBook Pro was insanely fast. I went from completely dead, plugged in the charger cable, powered up the laptop, then put it to sleep, and it fully charged in an hour and 41 minutes. Another area of frustration with the MSI Z16 came in regards to the fan noise. No matter what I was doing, the fan always seemed to be running at idle, web browsing, and then especially while conducting creator tasks. Whereas with the MacBook Pro, I never had fan noise until I started editing B-RAW and red footage in Premiere Pro. So that is one area where you're gonna get insane performance out of the MacBook Pro, but it's gonna be completely silent. Also, one thing to note is that the MacBook Pro can run at full performance, whether you're on the charger or on battery. The MSI Z16 has that same similar performance, but you're not gonna get as much performance. It's still gonna limit you a little bit, and you're gonna run out of battery very quickly. We're gonna get into the thermal and noise benchmarks in just a minute, but first, let's jump into the performance benchmarks. Now, to kick things off, I'm gonna have both MacBook Pros on the screen. I'm going to have the MacBook Pro M1 Max and the MacBook Pro M1 Pro. 
for the Z16, we're going to have an i7 11800H, the RTX 3060, 32 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte SSD. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of these models, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, one area that these laptops are really close in competition is the screen. They both have high resolution screens, highly color accurate, and bright screens. And here are the benchmarks of each of the screens coming up on your screen now. And as you can see, they both are really good quality screens. The MacBook Pro definitely outshines the MSI Z16, but not by you know an enormous leap or bound. They both do have great screens. Let's jump into the performance benchmark, starting out with Cinebench R23, Geekbench single core, and multi-core. And as you can see in the simulated benchmarks, the MacBook Pros are absolutely dominating over the latest i7 11800H with the RTX 3060 GPU. But how do the new MacBook Pros handle real-world tests, such as After Effects? Well, taking a look at After Effects, you can see that they are better than any laptop I've tested on my channel before. And remember, they're also silent and running extremely cool in regards to thermal temperatures. Now, as we move on to the render benchmark, Mark, that's an area where dedicated GPUs are going to be highly advantageous. But remember, your laptop is going to be a lot louder. So though we weren't seeing as great a performance inside of the render benchmark for the MacBook Pro M1s, they're still going to have what it takes to run After Effects well. As we move into the 4K export, you can see that the export times in Premiere Pro are good, but the export times out of the MSI's creator Z16 are slightly better in some areas. Some areas, they're about the same. Some areas, they're better. For 4K, the Z16 seems to be better. Now, regarding playback, we see these laptops pretty much neck and neck for playback. We're seeing great results from the MacBook Pro M1s. And remember, once again, these laptops are silent compared to the noisiness of the MSI creator Z16. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve, the export times out of DaVinci Resolve are substantially better for all of the tests. Now keep in mind, playback was good in both the MSI Creator Z16 and for the MacBook Pro M1s. They both had excellent playback. DaVinci Resolve is very optimized for playback, really with almost any laptop that has good performance. Now, one of my favorite tests is to check the fan modes and then the related thermals, export times, and fan noise out of the laptop. Now for the MacBook Pro, we don't have control over the fan modes. That's all pretty automated. So what we're gonna show for the MacBook Pro is different resolutions and the fan noise, thermals, and export times as they relate. So those are slightly different tests, but still give you an idea on under pressure, how much fan noise or thermals you'll experience with the MacBook Pro compared to the fan modes at 4K for the Z16. I hope this gives you enough of a perspective to give you a good understanding of which one would be a better purchase for you. Now, moving on to Photoshop, you can see that the MSI Z16 does perform better, but it's going to come at a higher fan noise and thermal limitation than the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro kind of limits the chip uh, in order to keep it cool and quiet, but though it is limiting, it still has excellent performance. So if you're at that 709 and then up to the 800 for the M1 Max, these are still going to be great scores and you're going to have great performance inside of Photoshop. Wouldn't be too concerned about the lower score because once you get above 700, you're basically in fantastic shape for the Adobe Creative Suite, Affinity Photo, Sketch, Figma, the like. When it comes to these laptops, really what it boils down to is efficiency. The MSI Creator Z16 is a well-performing laptop, but it's not as efficient as the MacBook Pro, M1 Pro, and M1 Max. Build quality, I'm going to lean a little bit more towards the MacBook Pro. It just seems a little more refined as we've seen in years as they developed their product. But overall, they both perform very well. So if you're wanting Windows or Mac OS, that helps with the choice. And then if you don't care so much about the cool and quietness, and of course the incredible battery life, then the MSI Z16 will be a great option for you. However, the choice is yours. So the choice is yours. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.